Welcome back to another edition of Come On Now, the podcast. This is Rudy Rodriguez Shomat, your host for this evening. We're going to do another edition of Rudy's Rants. That's right. I'm going to rant a little bit, but it's going to be a little bit different than how I normally roll because I'm honestly right now, I'm not in a ranting kind of mood because I'm here to talk about the Phoenix Mercury against the Indiana Fever, which took place yesterday in Phoenix. Um, Indiana came away with the victory over the Mercury, 88-82. So the the Fever got their first road, their first win over a 500 team, which is big for them because they had been struggling a great deal with teams with over a 500 record. It was reported after the game that Caitlin Clark came in with a migraine, so she battled through it. She finished with 15 points, 12 assists, and nine rebounds. So she was near a triple-double again, uh, 12 assists. She's getting everyone else involved. She did finish 4 of 14 from the field. Didn't shoot the ball very well, but she managed to make a, you know an impact in other ways. She did hit, hit a few logo threes uh, from next week, You know that parking lot range. Diana Taurasi for Phoenix had 19 points. She also struggled from the field with going 5 of 14. But I think the biggest thing to take away from this game is – Diana Taurasi has come around. Diana Taurasi did a lot of talking when it came to Caitlin Clark during the college basketball season. She had no issues talking about how Caitlin Clark was going to have a rude awakening and um, reality is coming. And basically almost second degrading and denigrating Caitlin Clark's um, success in college and dismissing all that she's done and and really kind of making it seem like Caitlin Clark's in for a rude awakening in the, in the WNBA. Well, yeah, you'll be you'll be in for a rude awakening when you're being double and triple teamed 80 freaking feet down the court. Um, <clears throat> and I think it was uh, abundantly clear with the way Phoenix defended Caitlin Clark that they did not want her to have the ball. They wanted to make sure she didn't get shots off. They wanted to make sure that, you know, everything that she did was very contested. Uh, they put Camila Copper on her, um, who came into the game averaging about 23 a game. Well, she defended Clark pretty well, but Camila Copper averages 23 points a game. And playing against the Indiana Fever yesterday, she finished with seven on three of 15 shooting. So. Her attention to Caitlin Clark wore her out to where she was completely ineffective on offense. Now, that matters when you lose a game by six points and you are 16 points under your season average. So, Clark has an impact offensively with or without the ball. She has an impact just standing 35 feet from the rim because the defenders may stand there with her. And she has an impact on the person defending her because if that person's expected to score, that person's going to be pretty damn tired chasing her all around the floor. Now, after the game, um, a game in which the Mercury led at halftime, for which then Indiana came back and took a 10-point lead in the third, only to see Phoenix come back and take, a, I think it was a 7-point lead in the fourth, only to come back and then see Indiana take over the game down the stretch. And um, Kelsey Mitchell stepped up huge for Indiana. She did nothing in the first half. But in the second half, I think she finished with 15 points. She had, she played a great second half, hit a big bank shot and one, um, which gave them the lead. Um, I think that was the lead for good at that point. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that was the lead for good. You know, And overall, Kelsey Mitchell played a really good second half. But Diana Taurasi at the end of the game says it's amazing what Caitlin's been able to do in her short career so far. Just nothing short of remarkable. I, I think that speaks volumes. You know, the one thing that I really love about her, she loves the game. You can tell she's put in the work, put the work in. And even throughout her short WNBA career, it's been a lot of pressure. 
a lot of things thrown at her, and she keeps showing up and keeps getting better every single game. You know, I, I have to say, that's 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 big time. I, I bravo to you, Diana Taurasi, for real, because what we haven't seen thus far this year from competitors against Caitlin Clark is that type of acknowledgement. I think the fact that Diana Taurasi pretty much plays the same position as Caitlin Clark, they're both fairly the same size, although you could see when they hugged how much thicker Taurasi is than Clark, which is something that Clark is definitely going to have to work on. She's got to get bigger in terms of more muscle and stronger because that will actually help her dealing with all the bumps and the, the double teams and triple teams and all the shit she's seen throughout the game. But they're the same height and close to the same weight, but Tarasi's just real thick and strong. So I think what you got going on here is you have an acknowledgement of really the person that Tarasi, who's largely regarded as the greatest women's the greatest WNBA player of all time, in large part because of her longevity, because I think if Maya Moore hadn't retired uh early. Maya Moore would probably be in that conversation as well. But in longevity and success, you know, Diane Taurasi has been as successful as there is as a WNBA player. And, and she's obviously for sure going to be in the Hall of Fame. And, and she's still playing at a high level at 42, which is pretty amazing in itself. But I don't, I'm tired of people saying, oh, well, when you, when you play great, it's amazing that you're 42 and doing this. But when you play bad, they say, oh, well, you're 42. So you can't get the credit when you do it well, but not get the blame when you don't do it well. So you have to pick one. You either take all the credit and take all the blame or, you know, but you can't have the credit and then be absolved of, uh, be absolved of blame when you don't play well. And overall, you know, it was a great game to watch. It was back and forth. Um, Clark hit a couple of free throws late in that game. Uh but overall, Indiana came up with a big, big win, and I think it's a really big thing that Diana Taurasi got on the mic and she said these things about Clark after. It kind of – I don't know if it's going to change the the viewpoint of Caitlin Clark from a lot of these old bitter – all these all these old bitter Bettys that are still in the league and they're still pissed off every time they play against her, like the Kennedy Carters of the world and the – even – um. You know, Copper was guarding her, and there was a point where Clark threw the ball up. I mean, threw up a shot, I guess, towards the basket, and the ball's coming back, and she puts her arm around Copper's head to knock the ball away to avoid it hitting Copper in the head, and Copper looked like she wants to fight. Like, later on, it looks like she acknowledged it and realized that she was told that she was knocking the ball away and not trying to have you get hit in the head with the ball. Um, but at the time, it's like, why are you automatically assuming that this girl's trying to do something to you? It's just weird to me because... You don't see that happen. They, these women in the WNBA seem like they're so ready to have a fight. And I don't get it, you know. And, and they get really, really uh, emotional really fast. I mean, NBA player, players do get emotional as well. But you see it a lot of petty, silly shit, like over a huddle. It's just, it's odd. Um, but, yeah, I got to say again, kudos, Diana Taurasi. What you did was stand up. It was, it was above, it was, it was a stand up thing to do. And I hope that some of these other players around the league who have been talking a bunch of junk about this young woman, um, Caitlin Clark, realize that she's only here to help the league grow. She's only here to play ball, and she's helping the league grow. And she's putting out, I mean, right now, I think it came out the other day, she's the first ever, the fastest ever to 300 points, 100 rebounds, and 100 assists. That's pretty sensational. And right now she's one of three players, I believe, in the league who are in the top 20 in basically every category. And one of three players, the other being um, Nafisa Collier from Minnesota and uh, Brianna Stewart from the Liberty. That's pretty huge company for a rookie to be keeping. So kudos again, Diana Taurasi. Like I said, this wasn't a rant. This is more of a appreciation because – I think what you finally saw was people are starting to appreciate the game that Caitlin Clark has and what she's bringing to this sport and how she's helping this sport. Because, again, they put 17-plus thousand in that arena on Sunday. The largest crowd Phoenix has had, the only sellout they've had, because they play in the same arena that the Phoenix Suns play in. So 
big time, big time win, big time acknowledgement. I appreciate you, Diana Tarasi, for stepping up. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow us at YouTube. Uh, come on now, the podcast, and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Come On Now Podcast, and at X at Come On Now Pod. I'll see you on the other side. Come on now. Thank you for watching Come On Now, the podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell so you get up-to-the-minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel. Thank you.